so <laughs> we're talking settings today street photography settings and there are a couple of things that pretty much in all of my shoots are the same and let's start with the first one and that actually is in which kind of shooting mode do i shoot there are different kind of modes that you can shoot in uh, for example the manual one but just because you don't shoot manual doesn't mean you're worse of a photographer uh, and i personally shoot in aperture priority mode because i just don't want to miss the shot and i think you know the camera like sony a6000 A6, that is like 10 years old can handle the situation pretty well it can determine what kind of uh, shutter speed should be there so i rather spend my time on, on composition looking around and seeing the things that are happening so i don't miss the shot and in case it's not per your liking how uh, bright the picture is what you can do is you can work with the exposure compensation so just feel free to you know set it to minus 0 0.3 0 0.7 or or in, in, in the other way on pluses and so you're gonna expose the shot exactly as you want. Tom, so what about f-stop? Do you do you shoot it? Do you shoot everything wide open? It really depends on the situation, actually. And this is something that I told you that you know sometimes you have to stick with one thing and sometimes with the other. Um, f-stop is something that I very much change. So since I'm shooting in the aperture priority mode, I have full control over the aperture. And for example, if it is really dark, I will probably shoot as wide as the lens goes let's say if i'm shooting with this prime i'm going to shoot like f1.8 uh, because you know i don't want to crank that iso up that much but if i have the liberty and if i have a sunny day that i can choose whatever the uh, the aperture i want then i will definitely not shoot wide open unless i really want to you know focus on that subject exclusively and and have everything blurred in the background while most of the times so I'll shoot like F4, F6 and so on. Okay, Tom, so what about your ISO settings? ISO settings, well, it depends on the situation. So if I'm in a place where there's, you know, a lot of trees and this is a cloudy day and it's not that, not that much light, then the one thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to work with the aperture, as I told you just before, open it up. And the second thing, well, I prefer increasing the ISO. One thing that I do before every shoot, I take some test photos and then I zoom into the picture and I, first of all, I see if the shutter speed is not too low and I, and I, I try to see if the, the picture is not too blurry um, because you know, you don't, you don't want that. So do the couple of test shots and then crank that ISO up if needed. Yeah, better to have noisy photos than a blurry one. Is there a minimum that you stay at to get sharp photos or what are we doing? Yeah, so first of all, I'm shooting in aperture priority mode, so I do let my camera choose the shutter speed. However, I do monitor still, um, and the, the, the way how I do it is, is, is just a simple calculation. I don't want it to be too low. And what's too low? Well, if I'm shooting with something like an 85 millimeter, this is going to be a little bit of math, but, but bear with me. If I'm shooting with 85 millimeter lens on APS-C uh, camera, that's about, what, 130 millimeter focal length? Right, so I will try not to have my shutter speed no less than double of the focal length. So that'll be no less than one over 250th of a second. Uh, just to be safe, you know, I'll put 320 or something like that, or even 400. If you have a, ca a camera with the in body image stabilization, you can go lower. Raw versus JPEG, what should we shoot in? Right, that's a very fair question. Well, I personally always shoot RAWs because I think uh, you have a lot of ability to edit these photos later in, and, and post-production is a really big part of uh, any photo. Um, however, if you in any way feel uncomfortable shooting RAW, I would say just shoot RAW and the JPEG. So you always have both. Or if you are a super professional and, and just, you know, are confident about the um, image that is coming out and you never want to edit, just by all means, shoot JPEG. What, what about image size? Are we doing small, medium, large? Right, um, I mostly do large because I think, you know, cropping is also a really big part of um, any photo composition. So better to have a larger image where you can crop it in later than small one, which you have to keep as is. Okay, Tom, so what about autofocusing? Or manual focusing, right? That's also right. an option. Well, as I said, you know, you're not none less a professional or a better photographer if you use autofocus. And I 
personally do recommend using autofocus especially for beginners um, again the same reason because i think it's gonna allow you not to miss the shot so i'm personally using continuous autofocus and the, regarding the the focus area i usually shoot wide most of the times but again this really depends on the situation remember because you you have to also have the ability to evaluate the situation and for example if the the wide focus area is too wide and it's just focusing on the wrong thing well if you have a newer camera and you have like a a, a touch screen where you can what's it called the point point focus or touch focus or something like that that is really good feature but if you have an older camera like the sony a6000 for example then you don't really have that option uh, pick zone or even center but I, my favorite one when there is a need to focus on something very specific is the so-called flexible spot and then you can just move it around the screen and focus exactly where you want it and just nail your shot when we're shooting are you taking single shot or are you taking burst shots depends <laughs> i think every answer for me depends i, I usually shoot a single shooting mode um, i'm a guy who kind of you know i frame and i take one shot and and, and hopefully <laughs> it works but there are situations where you know I don't know there's like bikes passing by some some fast movement then i will be going into the burst mode and then just go through the photos but again really depends on you if if you want no wrong answers here both will work um, whatever works best for you you you'll feel it all right i think that's all the questions that i have about uh, your photography settings is there anything else you want to touch on yes there is one thing there's uh, besides the settings there's also the tips for um, street photography and actually made a whole video about it um, i'm just gonna link it down below you can go check it because you know it's very interesting uh, where i talk about six tips on how to how to be good in your street photography that's it and keep on creating yes sir Whoop.